This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar illustrating lighting techniques in Apple Motion 5.5. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. In this short video tutorial, I'll illustrate the four different lights in Apple Motion and how they are used. The default light is an ambient light. This emits light, illuminating all objects in the scene from all directions equally. It has no position and no icon. When you add an ambient light, as opposed to working with the default, you can change the color and you can adjust the intensity. A directional light emits parallel rays of light in a specified direction from a source located at an infinite distance. We only control the direction of the light. You can move the instrument as much as you want, up, down, left, and right. has no effect. It's only as you rotate it that the lighting angle will change. A point light is the opposite of a directional light. This emits light outward from a single point in 3D space in all directions. The easiest analogy is to think of hanging a light bulb. Optionally, we can add fall off, as you see illustrated here, based on the object's distance to the light, where that which is closest to the light is bright, and as you get farther away from the light, it diminishes in intensity. With a directional light, we control the direction. With a point light, we only control the position of the light. Combining both the control of a direction and point light is a spotlight. This emits light from a conical light source and casts an elliptical pattern on objects hit by the light. The easiest way to think of this is a theatrical Leco light. This allows for a high degree of accuracy when we need to limit the area affected by a light, gives us the maximum amount of control, but it's also the trickiest to add because there's so much control and position and angle make such a difference. It's easy to get lost while working with a spotlight. We can also combine lights to blend different colors or provide fill. For instance, this image has an ambient light set to dim white so you can see the edges, especially on the right hand side. A directional light, which is blue, lighting the left hand wall and a red spotlight which lights both walls and the floor but you can see the elliptical shape of the light. Three different lights to create this image. With our light select let's go to the inspector light and we can see that by default it always adds a point light. A point light has position but radiates light in all directions. So as I pull this up, notice that green arrow, that's the y-axis. Notice the difference in how the text is lit. Or I pull it from side to side. Or I push it to or from the camera. To or from the camera, how do I tell what's going? As soon as we enter 3D space, this menu choice shows up. I switch between active camera and top and there's my text and here's my light. As I move my light you can see the change in that inset down below and as I pull it to or from the camera, oh look at that. Imagine animating this because everything can be animated with keyframes. I want to just have the light move through the text as part of my opening or have it disappear as part of a close. Or maybe I want to have it do its little magical thing this way. Ta-da! You can see why suddenly playing with lights inside motion is an exercise in spending a whole lot of time asking yourself, what if? <laughs> and giggling. So that's a point light. Well, let's change it. If I make it an ambient light, because ambient light comes from all directions equally, I lose the shading that the letters and 3D text provide. So everything is evenly lit, but there's no texture. There's a use for this because I can apply a color to it or change the intensity, as you can see here. I can say, give me a blue color or any other color that I want. And I can change the intensity, which I can't do with the default. But the problem is, is that because it's equal in all directions, I lose all of the, the shading, the texture, the 
difference between light and dark. So ambient has a role, but most of the time I tend to use a directional light instead. There's no reason to move it because moving the directional light as I grab this and drag it, notice makes absolutely no difference to my text at all. But changing the angle of the light does. The light is coming from behind. The light is coming from the side. The light is coming from the front. One of the mistakes I was making as I was rehearsing yesterday is I would get the directional light and I'd start to drag it over to a corner and no, because it doesn't make any difference. The position of the directional light is meaningless. But the angle of the directional light, especially X and Y, lit from underneath. I haven't moved the light, but it's still lit from underneath or it's still lit from the top. Combining the directionality of the direction light and the position of the point light, which is, remember, a hanging light bulb in an empty space, is a spotlight. Spotlight is just exactly like you would expect. It is a light that has that you can change the rotation of and you can change the position of or both. You can also change by going down to cone angle. You can change whether it's a spotlight or a wide and you can change whether the edges are soft or hard with all this. This, oh my goodness, this opens up. It's, it's like lighting a theater set or lighting a television set. There's so many options with each light that you can get totally lost. <laughs> I'll give you some examples of how to avoid getting lost throughout the day. So what we've seen is we've seen that we can work with the lighting that's built into 3D text. We can work with the lighting that's built into the environmental lighting. We can even add self-shadows. But the real fun starts as we start to add one or more of the standalone lights that are in motion. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar illustrating lighting techniques in Apple Motion. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 306. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.